Hi guys, it has been quite a while before uh, since my last tutorial, but um, you know, busy times, busy times. Um, so I should say before we get started, this actual uh, tutorial is sponsored by BenQ. BenQ reached out to me with their Screen Bar product and asked if I could just showcase it on um, my YouTube channel and I get to keep the product. So your boy's going places, you know what I mean? So anyway, um, I kind of thought, do I want a, a light that goes over the top of my monitor? Um, so, but you know, they said, give an honest opinion. They said, if you don't like it, tell your audience you don't like it and what's wrong with it, whatever. Um, so yeah, it turned up a few days ago and I've been using it and I really like it. It casts a really nice light over kind of your hands and your keyboard and your mouse area. You can change the temperature. And there's also a setting that kind of auto detects your lighting environment. Um, you can change the brightness up or down, but it feels like a premium product. Um, when you get it out of the box, it's nice. It, it's kind of like, it's a bit metallic. It doesn't feel like flimsy plastic. Um, no, it's pretty sweet actually. And also uh, it's USB straight into the back of your monitor. There's no mains or you can USB it straight into your computer. It just works really well. Anyway, um, as much as I really like it, I'm giving it away because, you know, I do YouTube and why not just do my first giveaway, yeah? I asked BenQ about this and they said, yeah, head over to their Instagram channel and follow them on their Instagram channel. Um, obviously, like their videos and that kind of thing. So the Instagram link to their channel is in the description and all you have to do is like this video, comment on this video, and uh, I will pick a lucky winner in the next video using a random name generator, which I will do in the video. And then I will ship it to whoever you are and you get to win it and you get a product and it's worth about 90 pounds in England. So wherever that is in your country, wherever you are from. Anyway, right, on with the tutorial and ka Bye Frost, let's have it. All right guys, so just a quick video now on fields. With the advent of Maya 2020.4, we've got a new version of Biofrost, which has got so many new features, it's difficult to just, you know, go over them in one video. Uh, today we're just going to be looking at fields. It's going to be one video of quite a few videos of the different things that we can do with fields. So today um, I'm just going to be uh, creating some particles. So we're just going to start with a basic particle graph, um, and I'm just going to right-click and explode that. Um, thanks. <laughs> I don't quite know why that happened, but uh, there you go. Uh, a tangled net to start with is never a good start. So here's that sphere that I've got going on in the scene at the moment. It's just it was just an animated sphere that just does that. Which is amazing. Um, and then, um, well, excuse me, that's kind of it. Right, stick that into the output. I'm going to go into the solver. I'm going to turn off the gravity. I'm going to go back into the source particles. I'm going to make them live forever, um, lucky them, and then I'm going to stick it up to about 1200 and I'm going to bring the size down to about 0.8. So I've got particles and they're just going to be going yuck like that. Might look good in the 90s, doesn't look good now. So next thing is we want to actually make fields and how do we do that? Well, if we just tab and type in fractal we can see there's a bunch of fractals in there, but we are looking for fractal noise field. Right? Don't forget the word field on the end of it. I'm gonna say that word again, field. Kind of rolls off the tongue. Anyway, here's our fractal noise field, and <laughs> we've got influences here. We wanna stick that into the influences, but it's gonna go eh, eh, like that, yeah? Because it just doesn't go in like that. We need to set an influence property. So if I just start typing in influence, like that, we can get influence set property. Um, we can see we've got an out influence there, and we can plug it into the influence. So that the field goes into value, and the out influence goes into there. So if I rewind and play now, we can have the same rubbish looking particles because we need to set some more properties. So in the influence set property, there's a thing called a key, which is uh, basically um, where we need to set an attribute. We need to tell it. What do you want to affect, basically? So if between the stimulate particles and the output, I add a watch point, we can see that we've got properties here, age, bounciness, whatever, position. I am after this, point velocity. So it's good that it's there. Um, now I know how to spell velocity, and I can go in here and <laughs> get on with it. So we've got point underscore velocity, like so. 
So now if I press play, we are going to see something a bit different. Boom. There we go. We've got our particles doing something a little bit crazy. So obviously, because we're dealing with a fractal, which is you know basically a, a, an image, really a black and white image, um, we can change fractal elements. But changing these fractal elements will just change the pattern, as it were. Yeah, it won't change the direction in which these are going. And there's a reason they're going in this direction. It comes down to vectors. And I'll just show you quickly. I am not uh, technically adept. Uh, I mean, I guess I am a bit, but um, I, I struggle with math. Maths, maths and math, whatever you want to call it. First thing you want to do is add a scope. If you type scope into Bifrost, you'll get a whole bunch of scopes for different things that you, you might be using. You might be using aero, volumes, you might want a volume scope, point scope, whatever. In this one, we're dealing with vectors. So we're, gonna, we're dealing with vector fields, in fact. So we can add a vector field scope. So with that there, I can just drag the field into the vector field. And this little uh, plane down here is where I want to see the fields. So I will put that into the um, probe geometry section, right? And then I'm just going to plug that in underneath my particles. Right. So boom, straight away you can see what happens. So we can see, we can, see, we can visualize our fractal. But we can also visualize the way in which um, that fractal is pointing, the vector angle. So if I rewind and play, you'll see a connection here between the way that the particles are moving and the, um, the field that we're looking at, the diagnostic. Now this is a really good way to diagnose your simulation and also an artistic way I've found. Um, so we can look at this and just think, well actually this fractal, you know, we could disconnect our particles if we don't want to keep simulating you might have like a really heavy simulation there and because you understand okay between these gaps here not a lot goes on and if they're all pointing this direction that's what way my simulation is going to go um, you can start to understand how you could use this as a visual kind of artistic tool so we could go into the fractal noise and just start playing around some more with our um, attributes so I could put in like six here and we can see things didn't change too much but I could put in two there and uh, two there and it changes a lot and I can go like 0.2 and it, you know it changes again so we can change the um, all of that there or you could do what I do quite a lot and that is to get an input and you could drag all of these elements into an input like so Bosch Bosch, 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 and I'll leave time there because I'm going to do something like that later. Why have I put that into an input? Well, because now if I click on the Bifrost graph, I can go into the attribute editor, um, into the graph, into extra attributes. Oh, where's it gone? Uh, Bifrost extra attributes, and they're all here. Okay, they're all. They should also be in the channel box. Um, yeah, there they are. They're in the channel box as well. So magnitude, number of frequencies. Well, and in doing that, I can just stick, start sticking the numbers in here. I'm going to stick in one, and then I'm going to middle mouse and start dragging up and down with these values, and it will start showing up in the um, pupil like that. And now this, rather than me having to plonk a number in here every time and wait, I can actually sit in here and artistically change how I want that um, to look. And that is going to change how our particles react so if you know if we've got really big values here like so when the particles play if they were plugged in um they will come here you little sucker um they will do like a much bigger movement rather than something that's more kind of complex um as you can see so and then we can just go back in uh back into the frequencies here and just say you're crazy you've done too much you've gone too far um you know or you can make it more complicated and if we press play we can see that our particles are doing a more complicated thing but they are all still pointing in the same direction so we can change that as well um, it's slightly more complicated but it's not too bad um, there's a lot of technicalities in the nodes that I'm about to produce out of the magic hat um, or the rabbit hole should I say but um, just go with it so let's just type in F curve here and we're going to get an F curve and the F curve from an artistic person's point of view 
is kind of going to add contrast. Imagine this fractal was a black and white image, yeah, like a normal standard fractal you'd see in After Effects or Nuke or whatever. Um, <clears throat> this is going to allow us, <coughs> excuse me, to kind of like make it harsher or less harsh in certain areas using this uh, kind of gradient up here. So I'll just stick the field into there. We're going to pull this out of here for a second. So we've got our F curve field, and then I'm going to create a gradient, which I'm not. Oh, you know, you can read the info on the gradient field. I don't understand it. I just know I need it, and it kind of like helps. Because if you read that, right, pause it and read that, and then come back to me and tell me if that made any sense to you. Um, then I'm going to add in a vector, uh, a vector field up here. This little sucker is what is going to allow us x, y, and z to move the direction of our vectors, okay? Um, so now we need to get these guys together, and much like the uh, key master and the gate key uh, in Ghostbusters, we're gonna now use a cross node, which sort of says, come on guys, let's be friends, let's do this together. And there we've got the cross node, and I'm just gonna stick that cross node into the value. And that is it, that is it, no more scary stuff, right? So nothing's going to change here at the moment. For one, I haven't got the uh, vector, the uh, scope plugged in properly because now I need to do the cross product into the vector field. Okay, that's going in there, um, and we need to put some numbers in the vectors. That's all it is, really. So if I stick in like one here, uh, we can already see that the vectors have changed position. Yeah, I'll put in like 0.2 here, and I'll put in 0.2 two here and things will probably go curly with our particles um, if they're still plugged in I'm just going to undo that vector for a second and if I rewind and play well, yes let's get in close da -da. we're going to get curly whirlies curly whirlies that's what you want curly whirlies and this is how I made that example which is in the uh, the Autodesk marketing video, by the way. Um, so we can add some more particles, just so we can start seeing this look even more mental. I'm going to take the size down a little bit more. Um, that's about 0.05 of rewind and play. We start to get some really kind of interesting looking stuff going on that you can actually, you know, use, be proud of, and show your mum. But obviously we can go back in there because I've like set some really small values on the vector field kind of here and here. We have kind of created a curl as such uh, because we've got a larger value there. Stick in 0.2 and then we'll get a different result. So I implore you to go off and actually play with this and uh, use this and come up with your own mad renders. And please, if you, if you do do it, if you just go off and create some mad stuff, I don't care how rubbish it is, or, or, or how rubbish you think it is, or good it is, or whatever, um, just do the Twitter thing. I'm on Twitter. My Twitter handle is strangebox underscore LTD. Yeah? Follow me on Twitter, because I post loads of this mad stuff all the time. But post me, just tag me in, or whatever it is you do. Tag me in, or at me, at your examples. I'd love to see them, because it's, you know, it's just interesting to know that your audience are picking stuff up, or, 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 or making some cool stuff. Maybe you're just doing it for fun, or maybe you're doing it in production. I would love to see it. Um, so yeah, go off and start playing with fields. As I say, this is the tip of the iceberg with fields. You can do a lot of other things with fields. We can use it to manipulate smoke, fire, explosions, snow, dust, water, um, particles, strands, and other procedural effects in Bifrost. So that that is it for now, guys. Remember the... Um, promo at the beginning of the video where you can win that uh, screen bar that is an awesome little bit of kit so do what i said which is you know like subscribe go over and um, check them out link in the description to go and check them out and i will see you in the next one i love you very much and uh, stay safe and goodbye